My name is Jeffrey Frankel and in this series of YouTube videos I will show you techniques and tips to reduce the time it takes to deal with questions in Paper 1 of the IB Chemistry exam at both standard level and higher level. When you're asked about how the current is conducted in an electrolytic cell, you have to remember that within the cell the current is conducted via ions. And outside the cell, the current is conducted by electrons. Let me draw that. This is a beaker or an electrolytic cell. And this is one electrode, and that's another electrode. This is the electrolyte. So that's the electrolyte. Aqueous solution or molten salt of any kind. This is, one, this is one electrode, that's the second electrode, and whatever the wires are there, that's known as the external circuit. And in the external circuit there are electrons flowing, and in the electrolyte there are ions. Now the ions can be anything from copper ions, 2 plus, sodium ions, 1 plus, lead ions, 2 plus, or aluminium ions, 3 plus. Those are the kind of ions that you're expected to know about. Oh, and let's put in zinc 2 plus. Okay, those are the positive ions. In addition to that, note it, notice these are all metals. The only, only non-metal positive ion that's sometimes present is a hydrogen ion. That would be present in aqueous solutions. In Molten salts, that would not be present. You would only get the corresponding metal ions. And on the other side, there are the negative ions, which are usually the chloride ion and the hydroxide ion. The hydroxide ion would be present in water. Chloride ion could be present in aqueous solution, sodium chloride, copper chloride, lead chloride, or it could be present in a molten salt, molten sodium chloride, Molten lead chloride, molten copper chloride. Occasionally you do see bromide iron in questions, and that could be again usually with copper or lead as the uh, metal ion. Okay, so those are the ions, and these conduct the electricity in the electrolyte. Any one of those or any two of those would be involved. Outside, in the external circuit, there are electrons. Now, there is a little bit of a fuzziness goes on here because there has to be a battery here. And within the battery, they are ions again, conducting electricity. But generally, the phrase external circuit to an electrolytic cell, there asking for electrons. In, in this case it's within the cell. So, in the electrolytic cell, which statement is correct? Well, you go through this and you can see that the electrons do not move through the electrolyte. Ions move through the and the Ions do not move through the external circuit. This is the only one. Electrons move through the external circuit and ions move through the electrolyte. So that, therefore, is the answer. If you go to this one, electrons move through the electrolyte. No, electrons do not move through the electrolyte and ions do not move through the external circuit. Which substance has the lowest electrical conductivity? Well, this is one of those questions where you should be able to do it within five seconds and realize that the only one that does not conduct electricity is hydrogen and gas. You just have to know that copper metal conducts electricity, mercury metal conducts electricity, lithium hydroxide aqueous conducts electricity. Anything that is aqueous whether it's sodium chloride, sodium hydroxide, lead chloride, or whatever, if it's aqueous, it conducts electricity. And all metals conduct electricity. And this one, any non-metal, could be hydrogen gas, nitrogen gas, oxygen gas, carbon dioxide gas, 
neon gas, helium gas, does not. None of those conduct electricity. This is another question about something you must know thoroughly. Lead chloride is an ionic solid, yes. Therefore, solid lead chloride conducts electricity. No, it does not. When a molten ionic compound conducts electricity, free electrons move through the liquid. No, they do not. When a molten ionic compound conducts electricity, it's ions that conducts the electricity, not electrons. When copper wire conducts electricity, copper ions move towards negative electrode. No, within any metal, the metal ions do not move. It is not the ions that move. During the electrolysis of a molten salt, reduction occurs at the negative electrode. Yes, that is true. And the reason that's true is because if you've got Cu2+, plus, it goes to the negative electrode. And it picks up two electrons and it goes to copper metal. And that's uh, aqueous. And therefore that is reduction at the negative electrode. This is another one where as soon as you see it, you should know the answer immediately that solid zinc chloride does not conduct electricity. And the reason it doesn't is because the ions, but the zinc ions and the chloride ions, cannot move when it is solid. Uh, solid zinc conducts electricity, molten zinc conducts electricity, molten zinc chloride conducts electricity because the ions can move. In solid zinc chloride, yes, there are ions, but they cannot move. Therefore, solid zinc chloride does not conduct electricity. This is a question you have to be able to do it in five seconds in order to save time for the other questions. Molten sodium chloride in an electrolytic cell contains only the ions sodium and chloride ion. That's Na plus and Cl minus. They are the only two ions that can move around the electrolytic cell and therefore it should be obvious to you that sodium is going to go to the negative electrode and chloride ion is going to go to the positive electrode. And look at this, chlorine is produced at the positive electrode. Yes, that's definitely true because two of those uh, goes to Cl2 plus 2E at the negative electrode. Sodium ions lose electrons? No. Uh, that that has to gain an electrode. Electrons flow through the liquid from the negative electrode to the positive electrode. No, electrons do not flow. They are the ions that flow. Oxidation occurs at the negative electrode and reduction at the positive electrode. No, you have to remember that oxidation occurs at the positive electrode. Oxidation occurs at the positive electrode. That's also the anode. Just remember that phrase, oxidation occurs at the positive electrode, which is the anode, and therefore you can remember that reduction occurs at the negative electrode, which is the cathode. When you're doing electroplating, there are three important items. One is the object that is being electroplated, the metallic object. The second is the metal, that you're going to electroplate onto the object. And the third is a solution of the metal in the form of a suitable salt in an aqueous solution. The metal object clearly has to be on the negative electrode. That is where positive metal ions, Cu2+, plus, will receive electrons and form, in this case, copper solid. So that has to be on the negative electrode, and therefore the copper that is present 
has to be on the positive electrode. So, the positive electrode increases in mass? No, the positive electrode is going to decrease in mass because that's where the copper is present and you're going to use that copper and transfer that copper to the other electrode, to the negative electrode. The concentration of copper ions in the solution decreases? No, the concentration of copper ions do not decrease because as they are used up, the, the copper metal is going to dissolve. Reduction occurs at the positive electrode. No, oxidation occurs at the positive electrode. The reaction occurring at the negative electrode is Cu2 plus plus 2 electrons goes to copper. Yes, that is the reaction occurring at the negative electrode. Now this is one of those questions where so many different Ideas are introduced, uh, increasing in mass, concentration of solution, reduction or oxidation, and then reactions. You have to think clearly about each one in order to assess which is the correct one. And the only way to do that is to understand thoroughly what is happening in the electroplating process. In the electrolysis of molten sodium chloride, you have only sodium ions and chloride ions. And you have to know that within the electrolyte, within the molten sodium chloride, ions will move. And you have to also know that oxidation does occur at the positive electrode, the anode. So initially, we can immediately say A is true because oxidation does occur at the positive electrode. What happens in this case is that Cl minus, two of them, goes to Cl2. That's gas and that's liquid. The chloride ion is losing electrons. So oxidation is the loss of electrons, therefore that is oxidation. And it does occur at the positive electrode because the positive electrode is going to absorb the negative electrons. Okay, electrons move through the... No, electrons do not move through the electrolyte. Sodium ions move through the electrolyte, that is true. No, they don't, they're not going to move to the positive electrode, they will move to the negative electrode. Chloride ions move through the electrolyte, yes, that is true, and are reduced at the negative electrode. No, as I've just said, they are oxidized. A is the only one that is correct. In my next video, I will be discussing problems with voltaic cells. But there is one thing that is common to both voltaic cells and electrolytic cells. It's that reduction occurs at the same electrode in both voltaic cells and electrolytic cells, and oxidation occurs at the same electrode as well. So, if you remember that oxidation occurs at the positive electrode, which is the anode, for the simple reason that that's where they can the ions can lose their electrons. Therefore, it must mean that reduction occurs at the negative electrode. And reduction occurs at both of them there. So that is where reduction occurs at the negative electrode. Oxidation occurs at the positive electrode. So simply remember that. Oxidation occurs at the positive electrode, which is the anode in both voltaic cells and electrolytic cells. And therefore, reduction occurs at the other electrode, which is the negative electrode, and also called the cathode. You have to be a little bit careful about electrolyzing aqueous solutions. In principle, if it simply says aqueous solutions of copper chloride is electrolyzed, then you can assume that copper will be deposited at one electrode, that would be the negative electrode, and chlorine will be deposited at the other electrode, which will be the positive electrode. So, looking through this, we get to D. Copper metal is deposited negative electrode, chlorine gas positive, positive electrode. 
If it had said a weak solution, if it had said a weak solution, I might have gone for C, oxygen gas, because then what then happens is that there is too low a concentration of the chloride ion and oxygen gas will preferentially be deposited. However, in the absence of the word weak, assume that the two ions will be the determinant ions. So copper will be deposited there and chlorine will be deposited there. If this was if you found this YouTube video helpful, then please say you like it and subscribe to my channel and look at my other YouTube videos. Thank you.